for England Cricketer of the Year. And I think this one could be one that actually we we kind of talk a little bit about and and maybe have a bit of a but could be could be six different names again, Joe. Who knows? But I'll let you I'll let you kick off. I'll let you give us your your six names. Or sorry, three names first, actually. Don't be greedy. And um we'll see if we match up with any of those. Okay, so my first one, I've already mentioned him as a nominee earlier on in the piece. So we'll go with Stuart Broad. Finishing his England career on a high, taking 38 wickets in the year, um, was, what, second leading wicket taker in the Ashes, I think, wasn't he? Yeah. As well. Um, hit his last ball in Test Match Cricket for six, or whatever it was. Took a wicket with his final ball in Test Match Cricket as well. Like, could you write it? He also changes the bales around, and that gets wickets <laughs> too. I think he has to be a worthy nominee. He also wears a sweatband. I don't know whether... It- I don't know whether you would have picked up on that. The commentators don't mention it too much. Um, you might have passed you by. Yeah, ex- extra points for the sweatband. And also the the precision of him standing at the top of his mark, like choosing how he's going to grip the ball for each delivery. <laughs> I love that about Stuart Broad. And we're not going to have that anymore. So the next person, the next bowler with the amount of precision on their grip as they're just about to run into bowl. Please stand up. <laughs> Second nomination. I'm going with Nat Siverbrunt. Averaging, we've not really mentioned ODIs, no. but she averaged 131 in five ODI innings, including three centuries, notably two of those back-to-back in the ashes to keep the draw alive and the series alive in fact before they went into the T20s section of the Ashes comfortably the number one ranked ODI batter in the world Um, and yeah I don't think you can underestimate the impact that she had in that Ashes series Um, yeah Nats of great nomination I don't know who to go with for my last one how many many, I only asked you to get down three I've, yeah, well, there's different cases to be made, isn't there? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Tammy Beaumont, you know. Okay. Because it's not every day you score a Test double ton, and she's broken that record and done that this year. Phenomenal. Done pretty well in ODIs as well. Obviously out of favour with the T20 setup at the minute, but equally in the franchise stuff, the competitions that she's played in, she's been epic. Um, if you haven't forgot, she's also scored nearly 120 in the 100 when I dropped her. Um, but that's not international cricket. But yeah, Tammy Beaumont, my third nomination. Three superb nominations. Um, to go through the, the Patreon players for the nominations, we have got one from Josh, um, mentioned about Stuart Broad taking a wicket with his final ball and like hitting a, hitting a six with the last ball of his his career as well. Uh, Jono has provided a nomination for Moeen for sticking the whites on and playing a series that a lot of people thought was beyond him at that point. Um, Zach Crawley has got a nomination from Val Roxon, top run scorer in the Ashes, um, which I think is probably worth talking about. Uh, Josh has provided Tammy Beaumont. Ads has gone for Stuart Broad and... Uh, Adam has gone for Sophie Eccleston. So there are some some nominations there from the Patreon. I I have gone for Zach Crawley, which might surprise a few. But I think I think what what I want to take into, into consideration for Zach Crawley is the the absolute step up that we've seen in performance from Zach Crawley this year. I think to to go from to go from which I suspect a lot of people, including myself, were, were calling for him to be dropped many, many times. And I think England probably should have taken the opportunity to do so. However, they didn't. And they invested in Crawley Coin and Crawley Coin's come good. And he's scored 606 runs this year. Leading run score in the Ashes, as just mentioned. Smoked the first ball of the Ashes through the covers for four, which is going to be one of the most iconic Ashes moments for the next probably 20, 30 years. I just mentioned about the step up in performance and I think the inclusion in the ODI squads as well, which arguably I think is going to end up being probably his best slash easiest format for him to play. So 
Zach Crawley was my first nomination. My second nomination was Nat Siverbrunt, inaugural WPL winner with Mumbai. Um, as you said, averages 130 in ODI cricket. As you said, kind of kept that um, Ashes series alive. It always feels like Nat Siverbrunt's almost doing it single-handedly as well. And I do think, and I do think that if if men's and women's cricket were on parity with um, world popularity, whatever you want to, I don't know the best way to describe it, but I genuinely think Nat Siverbrunt would be considered the best cricketer in the world right now. And I do think you could come up with a serious argument to, to suggest that she actually is and averages 45 in T20 internationals as well. And thirdly was Tammy Beaumont, test double hundreds, fifth highest score in history. I think it was the first 100, 100 in the women's side of it in the process of you you grassing her down on the was it deep square was it deep midwicket that you grassed her i think at sophia gardens yeah it was deep square it was very mm. slippy it was was it was that the ball or the the footing a bit of both actually <laughs> they get quite a bit of rain in cardiff as it goes <laughs> so they're my three nominations i do feel like an absolute moron for not mentioning Stuart broad though worthy nomination i like i don't mind zach crawley's um nomination from you because like you said he has probably improved the most in as as an England player in the last year you would say um under a, what feels like a lot of pressure going into the Ashes series and like you said I was going to mention it iconic Ashes moment hitting that first ball before I don't think anyone will forget that and then the camera turning to Ben Stokes's face and him just being like what am I witnessing yeah um but I don't think he wins the award but I like the nomination. Thank you. It's, just, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Do you I give it to Broad because he's retired? I mean, he's he's achieved a lot as a 37-year-old to take 38 wickets in a year. He's very impressive. It's almost like... That's half a year as well, Joe, because he couldn't series. be bothered to do the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. That's of a brunt and her impact. And... Yeah, oh, it's for me. I think it's one of those two, but I think I'll, so. I'll throw the button to you. Yeah, I'll, well, I think I think we'll write Tammy Beaumont off as impressive as it is, just to kind of save your blushes. I think um, I think it'd be embarrassing if you were up there shaking Tammy Beaumont's hand to give the award away because you might drop it on the on the on the vando, but Wee. you never know. Um, oh, is it Stuart Broad or is it Nat Siver Brunt? That's such a. This is iconic. I do, I do genuinely think that that at the moment or this year, I think Nat Siverbrunt is a is a better cricketer, like pound for pound, than Stuart Broad. But he does wear a headband, which Nat Siverbrunt doesn't. So, yet. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm swaying towards Nat. I'm swaying towards Nat Siverbrunt. I really am. Like 131 average to essentially kind of keep England nearly win that Ashes series ultimately. And you can you can throw a little sprinkle in there about winning the WPL with Mumbai and an averaging forty five in T Twenty internationals too. I, I don't think she's had the best year with the ball though. Um, but that's and I don't know. Yeah, she's, she's just moving... coming back. She's just coming back from injury. She's back yeah. bowling now. She did okay mm. in the T Twenties against India. Um, be interesting to see how many she bowls in the Test match. But yeah, she's been injured. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's certainly that batting, isn't it? Yeah. You never feel I'm, you never feel like England are down and out until she's got out. So that impact is quite big, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm saying that. Nat's got my awards. I don't know where you're going, but that's my vote. Nat's got the award. 